living room. The lights are off. The muted blue glare of the TV reminds you just how helpless you really are. Thunder shrieks, the wind howls, and the attic creaks. A knock at the door surprises you. Oh. Hey, I didn't order any pizza. You stand up as the door crashes open, and the murder smurker enters your home. Oh, yeah. The yell jokes pop your little gumdrop buttons and start mansplaining some of the most vile true crimes you've ever heard of. You listen to them, unsure at first, but relax into it. Pretty soon you're laughing, horrified, and strangely want to be dumped into a nice cold glass of milk. At some point they realize they have forgotten to introduce themselves. So make room in your heart for Grant, Jamie Austin, Carlton Joseph, and the friends, lovers, and or acquaintances they pressure into hanging out. Like your creepy boss that has no friends? Oi, I don't want to hang out more. I really miss you. Make room for murder smarter! Okay, uh, for today's uh, episode of Murder Schmurder, I, Jamie, am the host. Can I get, like, a... No. <laughs> so is that what you wanted? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, whenever you hear Jamie... <laughs> yeah, okay. I gotta own it. <laughs> um, before we get into today's uh, true crime event that we sure. discuss... Yeah, whatever. Um, I would like to introduce a guest host. Uh, we have Grace. Grace, say hi. What up, y'all? No, he said say hi. <laughs> hi. Wow, Thank really you. strong out start, starting out strong, Grace. I'm, what can I say? I'm just I go against the grain. Um, and what do we want to call this bit? I'm gonna say like I I want to start a rap career, and I have a couple lines jotted down, and I just want to hear some feedback. Oh. Right. right. Okay. Cool. Okay. That's, that's um, it's a little long, but that'll be the title. So this is yeah, the bit like that you're that. adopting. Yeah. Is I want to start a rap career. Yeah. I, I want to start yeah, a rap look, career. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah SoundCloud Corner. Yeah. yeah. I like SoundCloud Corner. That's yeah. That right. Sounds very legit. It's not bad. Yeah. It sounds good. Okay. Uh, here's my first line. Uh, one to ten, everybody. All these white guys are dickheads. They all Caucasian. Baby, I can see our future. Yeah, that's so Raven. <laughs> Sweet. Now we got to put it in context, though. So let's go. No, you do this a lot, Grace? Make, make beats? Just beatbox? Oh. Yeah, he'll make noises. <laughs> he'll make rhythmic like noises sometimes. Rhythmic like. <laughs> okay, what's my score? <laughs> I love that Grant's just... <laughs> He's like a metronome. He's just going to keep going. He is going to until you, like, tap him on the head. To um, I don't know. I give it, like, a six, seven. That's not bad. That's not bad. Joseph, yeah. Grant? Uh, I'm going to split the difference and say six and a half. I'm going to say that I need it in context. So I'm going to do that again, and then you're going to... <laughs> the, no, so. the, the, the music throws me off beat, so in my rap career, I go full acapella. <laughs> Full spoken word. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be the Johnny Cash of rappers, but with no music. With no music. I think it's more like uh, William Shatner. (laughs) (laughs) Even better. I love it. Okay. My new girlfriend is an Asian mommy. I go down and all I taste is that ooh mommy. Wow. Oh, man. Let it sink in. Yeah. I... That's already there. That's a, yeah. that's going to be there for a long that's, time. That's, that's pressing at the subconscious. Yeah. Yep. That's a good pun. And it rhymes. Yes. So that's good. It, I, I like that you congratulated yourself <laughs> on a good pun. Like, that, wasn't, that wasn't me, Joseph, or Grant. That was straight up Jamie patting himself on the back. <laughs> he absolutely was. Uh, you know, for those reasons, uh, seven. Seven and a half. Yeah, yeah if yeah. you're going for, like, punny shock value... Um, Definitely on the like seven, seven and a half side. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I give you seven for the umami. Ooh, yeah. The umami really sold it. <laughs> yeah, it's pungent. It's got its own taste. Oh, no. 
Okay. Uh, the last one is. Uh, oh, he's got more. Okay. Yeah, this is the last sweet, one. Sweet. Uh, got it. This is my favorite one. I actually, in real life, true story, I have told this to rappers and been like, you can steal you can this line. Please use this. <laughs> please, please put this I in a song. I want you to have this lyric. One rapper that I met, he's really nice, but like he does like Christian themed rap, and he's like that. I'm not lying. He's like, that's actually pretty good, but it doesn't, it's not on brand, but oh. it is good. And but it like, also came from a Christian rapper. I mean, obviously it's off brand for a Christian rapper. Is there, I want, I'm trying I'll, to think, is, is I want to hear a good it. Christian rapper? Lecrae. Listen. There's Lecrae. Has anyone ever heard of Lecrae? No, Mm-mm. I don't know them. No, we'll listen to this afterwards. Oh yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's dive into <laughs> Yeah, Christian I'd love rap, to hear yeah. someone do a hip hop version of that old rugged cross. Actually, mm. have you? Uh, there's an, another one. Did you guys remember that that one Christian rapper who did a song about uh, Eminem? Oh yeah, because you showed me that. Yeah, where he's basically praying for, praying for Eminem's soul. Oh, that's oh, kind of sweet. It, it's actually like very endearing, <laughs> and I think the song is good. Yeah, like it's not as a song. Just <laughs> I, like I as, just like to get that on record. It's not good. Song <laughs> it's, it's, thank yeah, you for telling it, me that. Okay, I appreciate that. It's yeah. a good song. Yeah, it's not. For everybody, but you're saying <laughs> on the surface, it's a good song. Yes. Jamie likes dumb shit. <laughs> so I my, think we all like some dumb no, shit. No, we all do. <laughs> but Jamie will, uh, Jamie will like send me something and he'll be like, you've got to check this out. It's awesome. I fucks with this so hard. And it'll be either something that I'm like, wow, that actually is really cool. That's very innovative. That's very different. I wouldn't have like thought to seek that out. Or it's the worst garbage I've ever seen or heard yes. in my entire mm-hmm. life. And yes. I'm like, why do you continue to send me this shit? I love that there's no middle ground. There's never a, <laughs> I either love it or hate it with stuff he shows me. Oh, nice. There's never like, oh, you know, it's it's pretty good. It's it's just I can validate revulsion or I'm adding this to a playlist. Well, like, <laughs> there's certain things I'll send to you and I'm like, I know your taste in music, your taste in media, and I can cater to that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I listen to so many varieties of music nine times out of ten i can figure out like oh grace would like this grant would like this mm-hmm. and i can cater to which it. is nice but my own taste in music it's it's like it's like when you put like ketchup and like eggs and like scrambled eggs and like potatoes together or mashed potatoes like oh mashed it, potatoes yeah it may not sound very good to you, but I'm to okay me, with this. Yeah. it's very good. Yeah, I'm okay with I don't that. know about mashed potatoes That's unless you were frying them into some kind of latke like cake. I was gonna say I've definitely Ooh, done yeah, like really good. right eggs, yeah. ketchup, and like roasted right. hash brown style potatoes. Yeah. yeah, I've never done mashed though. I think I was just I feel like, like the texture would be way off. It was because it's too much loose stuff. It was uh, one of my favorite snacks as a kid. <laughs> like I like were learned how a, to make a, mashed potatoes and I learned how to make eggs and I was like, ketchup. were you a like, butter I'm noodle good. kind of kid? What were you a butter noodle kind of kid? No. Oh, okay. I hate butter noodles. Okay, uh, last line. Last okay. line. You ready? <laughs> the heat is coming. My Asian girl cooking dinner, but I'm eating out the tush. I got the libido of eight dicks, so she better bring that octopus. Wow. Wow. Hell yeah. You really eight. You really took us somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you really took us somewhere with all of that. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, you could absolutely give that to Migos right now. You, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would just like to add that Grant was prompted into pressing that. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't him. Like, let me give him this one. Although I will say I like that a lot. No, that was, yeah, that was uh, pretty good. Okay, you can tell that. Grace. I mean, yeah. If you're. I'm actually quite <laughs> curious to hear how the song progresses now. So you have to finish it. Oh, you want this all in one song? Are, you can't just throw lyrics wait, out and not finish. Yeah, not, it's like that's exactly what I. Is this not did. one song? No. Well, I mean, I guess it could, but I it just, all seemed to flow as in like one yeah. central message. Unless all your <laughs> lyrics are about there's, dating there's Asian. A, there's a central theme that I am getting out of the song. <laughs> is this the I have a crush on Ali Wong album? Like, what? You- I mean, I do love Ali Wong. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. he's wrong, but yeah. I just want to know what the <laughs> the thematically there is a lot of st- there, there's it's a lot just, to break down. There's just one real central argument: is I w- I'm dating this Asian girl. Um, it, no, nine times out of ten, this is just like me going about my day and like and something o- pops into like your head. octopus. That's a funny word. 
mm-hmm. and then like what rhymes is octopus tush octopus eight dicks and then like it comes together i'm like hey it's really a, a, a privilege to get to see how your mind works. <laughs> yeah, it was lovely. Yeah. It's real behind the actor studio. <laughs> Inside the actor studio, there we go. What do you think about when you drive? Like, you know, when you're like zoning out and like, where, where does your mind Don't work? crash. Don't go off the interstate. Oh, I, I'm, <laughs> I am like, man, I bet if I yelling took a really and screaming hard left and cussing turn, at every other driver done. on the road. Yeah. <laughs> really? yeah. I am my least yogic self when I'm driving a I'm, car. I'm zoning in and out. Like, because I will. I'm close oh. to murdering everybody. Yeah, so on the she's road. yelling at you <laughs> on the road. Yeah, yeah dude, I'm happened. like nine if you're times zoning <laughs> out, thinking about octopus. Yeah, I'm zoning out, and then I like that, pull oh, in that. somewhere and be like, "Oh, I made it. That's cool." I mean, I do that too. <sighs> I think everybody has that moment where they're like, "Oh, yeah, I made it safely." But I was checked out the entire time. Yeah, I actually yeah. try and uh, actively rush Grace off the phone while she's driving. She'll call me for some reason or another, and then. Be like, oh yeah, so I forgot to tell you, stupid son of a bitch, god damn it, get out of the hell out of my way. And I'm like, okay, hon, what do you need to say? I really <laughs> want to get off the phone very quickly. <laughs> I really want you to be safe and to uh, not blow a blood vessel yeah. yelling at this dude. Grant will uh, very much do that. Mm-hmm. I really do. Because we talk on the phone regularly while we're driving, like to and from life things, because we're in the car very often. So I'll be the one who's like absolutely livid <laughs> at everybody. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Full on. Like, veins popping mm-hmm. out of my head. I said Atlanta. Like, yeah, very true. Yeah, Is that where you're from? I'm mm-hmm. from Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Learning to drive in Atlanta? Oh, yeah. You just have to be aggressive and on the offensive the entire time. Yeah, All the time. She's a hardcore bitch behind the wheel, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, but if you can learn she'll to She'll get you there, there fast, get you there safe, but she's going to scare like the a ride. couple of people. No, you won't have a, the best time. Whatever. <laughs> I'm a very safe, fine driver. You are. But when I'm by but myself, a very offensive, I am... I am Stressful. I am nasty. That's okay. My <laughs> wife Sarah get in the slow lane and just post up, like just go like V speed limit. I do sometimes. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, like did. Yeah, yes. he does. Actually, I take that back. You and I just took a road trip, and you posted up in the left lane a little too often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to get the fuck out of the way of the people that are going under the speed limit. Yeah, but then people passed you constantly. <laughs> you that was their the fault. Line. They didn't give me time to get back That's over. That's not how that lane works. <laughs> I'm listening See, to my comedy albums. This is, this is <laughs> I, got I don't know what they're do, doing. Baby. I'm enjoying the drive. <laughs> yeah. But no. I'm going, ha, ha, ha. That is a good perspective on the world <laughs> and then thrown to the right, you know? <laughs> no, but Sarah, my wife, learned to drive in, she, in Massachusetts with a bunch of mass holes, so I, oh, I'm yeah, familiar yeah. with that where when I'm the passenger, things are different. Yeah. Yeah. And I just let her do what she's got to do. <laughs> that's true. I mean, I just hang on to that oh shit handle, and I'm just like, that's that's the right, baby. We're going. Is the greatest yeah. invention in the car of all time. The what? The oh shit handle. You know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just what is that I, for? I, I like that about us that we we're both ride or die bitches. <laughs> oh yeah, no, like to be honest, and like just in case she ever hears this, I love her very much. But like I will say, Sarah's not the best driver, <laughs> and I do oh. sometimes. I'm just like. Okay, baby. Yeah, exit's coming up. Yeah. yeah, you get you just oh, just cut the dude off. Okay, all right. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, he's mad. Yeah. All right. Let's go. He's like, oh, fuck him. He's not us. And I'm like, wow, you really are a sociopath behind the wheel, <laughs> <laughs> which is so unlike her in every other sense. <laughs> like, dude, I'm the opposite. Like, if I'm about to miss an exit, I'm like, well, there we go. <laughs> I guess I'll just go to the next. Yeah, I'll just one go to the next. Exit. But see, that's how you should be. You should just be like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll just go up and then. You know, not inconvenience everybody else, but... Yeah. I don't drive dangerously to, like, cut people off. I, (laughs) like, I very much know when I need to exit, and I'm safe, and I... Yeah, that's true. I signal... That, which is something that people in Tennessee don't do. They do not true. use their mm-hmm. fucking turn signals, which blows my mind. I'm like, <laughs> she's used to having to merge five lanes to get to her exit. That's yeah. Right. yeah, here with just our piddly two, maybe three lanes, <laughs> she's there. She's ready. Yeah. Know, by the time the but exit comes, I'm like, up. oh yeah, I'm driving behind so and so, just minding my own business. All of a sudden, they like slam on their brakes and make a hard right, and I'm like, oh great, yeah, that was a really beautiful. If uh, only I'd signal. known you were going to do that. I loved knowing exactly what you were going to do prior. Prior to you almost making me rear end you. It's so fun. Okay, so I have like this weird law that I abide by 
like while driving. Like I believe everyone has to use their turn signal. Yeah. So if you're trying to get into Maybe, my lane yes. and you don't use <laughs> yeah, the turn I like signal, that he says by law, it's like yeah, that's just the law. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Hear, 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 me, hear me out. Hear me out. So like, let's say like I can tell you want to get into my lane, mm -hmm. right? And you like have to take this exit, and I can tell you like you're speeding up or slowing down, unless you put on that turn signal, I will mimic what you're doing to be an asshole because I'm like, use that turn signal. Yeah. Um, I just let people know. But this... I do that This too. one time, this worried me because like, I got off work, it was late at night, this guy's like, let's say like 50 yards ahead of me and he doesn't use a turn signal. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? There's no one on the road other than me and him. But I was like, you gotta use your turn signal. But we're both about to get off the same ramp. And as like, he's... Uh, going on the ramp, I see him not following the lines, like not bearing right. And he's just going straight. And I see this car like, huh, they, they might miss this ramp. And they dive like on the hill. Oh, shit. <laughs> so they literally miss the ramp. They literally miss the <laughs> yeah. ramp. And then like, as I'm driving, I'm like, oh my God, are they okay? And they just like hit the gas and just went right back <laughs> on the interstate. And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess that's not a problem if you solve it like that. Jesus. <laughs> it's just a momentary lapse yeah. of it. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, how you, that's how you, that's how you adapt, you know? Yeah. Is if you go off, you're like, all right, hit the gas and keep going. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Grace, would you like to stick around for today's true crime? I can. I can. If you sure. want to. If you'd like to. Yeah, I mean, I've got nothing else going on. I'm okay. going to watch sports. So Sports. Okay. Nice. Woo! So, what kind of sports? Atlanta Braves sports. Oh, you're Braves girl? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I'm a ride or die, so, man. Hey, you don't have to tell me and Grant. <laughs> yeah, we already know. <laughs> Okay, uh, today we're talking about a guy named, I don't know how to correctly pronounce it, it's a Swedish name, it's, uh, I believe it's Tor Heden. All right, we'll Okay, I'll take it. Okay, uh, so Tor Heden, I, 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 I'm going to go ahead and say it. Imagine if there was an evil Forrest Gump. I'm on board. Okay, let's go. Continue. All yeah. right. I think like Tor Heden to me is essentially a evil Forrest Gump. Like things just work out well for him. And you're like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Say and more then, right now. Let's yeah. go. And then he just accidentally <laughs> invents Swedish fish. <laughs> like, so I mean, like while like doing yeah. the research for him, all I could think is like, is this guy a drunk idiot or like a criminal mastermind? Both. Great. I love it. Okay. So also I have to say one of the wild things while doing research for true crime is like you get to see a lot of other true crime podcasts, other true crime vloggers, bloggers, yada, yada, yada. And a lot of them do the same shit where they like hype up this person and they like, mm -hmm. like this mastermind, this fucking genius knows. And, and like when you look at it, you're like this fucking person is just an idiot surrounded by other idiots who can't piece together. Like the cops who are just like, no, nah, oh, this seems fine. Yeah. Um, anyway, Tor Heaton was born on January 7th, 1927 in a small town called Storhari. I'm probably butchering it again. This is in Sweden. So to start off his criminal history so apparently it starts in september of 1943 at this time he's about 15 years old apparently he was supposed to get some oats for his family farm specifically to feed his horse and it's it's what they eat it's never said why he chose to stole the oats but it's inferred that it was like out of necessity but they never like there's no evidence showing that his family was like super poor or like they were dying or the animals were dying or anything it just says like he needed he to some steal oats. some oats yeah. and so it he, was it was required yeah. that he steal these oats yeah. is what you're saying yeah so apparently he goes to this one brewery and steals these oats and as he's stealing these oats he apparently does this in the middle of the night to cover up his masterful scheme, he just burns the brewery down. <laughs> okay. Wait, so he went to get oats for his horse mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. Yeah. Stole them. Mm -hmm. burns burned the, the brewery place. down. <laughs> burned the place down. Covered up your tracks. Got it. Tinderbox. Yeah, cool. Got it. But I got to say, if you're trying to piss off a town, 
You burn, burn down the brewery. Take away their beer. Take yeah. Away yeah. Their yeah. Beer. yeah. That was Especially a, a place like Sweden. Bad that, idea. Right? It's really That's a miscalculation. Because mm-hmm. okay. then they're going to be like, who the fuck burned our brewery down? We're going to hang it's it. the only one we had. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go through the whole story and then I'm going to give my theory on what actually happened afterwards. About the oats. About, about oh, everything. the whole thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> gotcha. Because like, I, like, I, have, I have read too much stuff about this fucking idiot that I'm like, no, I think this is what happened and okay. this is like how he got away with it. Right. Anyway, for this, he gets away scotch-free. Nothing ever happens. Like Scotch-free? The, was that was that the not whiskey free? What is what's the term? I think it's Scott free. Scott, but the, it's Scott. Scott no, I mean that's fine. I just I like Scotch free. I like Scotch free since <laughs> <laughs> like, since I was a kid. Scotch free. Anyway, he gets away scotch free. Yes, zero percent scotch in this. No scotch. No scotch. Um, he moves to a different town, becomes an adult, yada yada yada, and <laughs> <laughs> got it. Uh. He becomes a cop in this town. Good. Yeah. So, Great. <laughs> I don't, it's never really said like if he wanted to be a cop or if like he, like this was some masterful plan. Or if uh, he just bumble fucked his way yeah, into becoming a cop. It just like, it pretty much just like, and then he became a cop. You seem not visibly drunk. Would you like to be a police officer? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he becomes a cop. He's in this, this small, small town um, called Herva. I couldn't find the population size of Herva at the time, but I looked up the population size of what it is currently now. The population size is 350 people. No. So, now? Yeah. Jesus. That so must, there much, must much bigger, 40 obviously. Back then. In yeah. 19, <laughs> there must have been like 40,000 people, you know. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. Then the plague came through. So, like, well, he burned all their oats. <laughs> How big was everyone's high school? My high school was like 400 people. Freshmen to seniors, about 400 people. My high school is actually about the size of the town, yeah. 360, I think, yeah. Wait, that's how many students, like from freshmen to... I'm pretty sure, yeah. It's like 360. Yeah, a couple hundred, like two, 300 for me. I had, there were like 1,200 students at my high school. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Yeah. Atlanta. How many teachers did you have? A lot. Ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, four. We, no, we had, it was like one of those where you had like different tiered uh, learning abilities. So you had like the gifted classes, and then you had like the middle of the road kids, and then you had the ones that the needed real, a little extra help. The real sure. dummies. I wasn't gonna say dummies. I the mean, ones who needed help. Everyone's yeah. got. Everyone, things you know, that they need help with. You might have a learning disability, or you might be stupid, or you might, you know. You might just suck at math. Yeah, I suck at math. I am terrible at math. But yeah, I had I had about 1,200, and okay. my graduating class was about the size of this town. Yeah, so. Damn. Yeah, that's what I want you to understand. Like, <laughs> this town is fucking tiny. Tiny. <laughs> and this also plays into what I'm going to tie together, like my conjecture, my theory. So he's in this tiny ass town. He is a cop. So on the night of November 28th, 1951, he goes to go he goes to play poker with some friends. Specifically to play his buddies, John Allen Nilsson. Now it's said that he lost a lot of money and then got into an argument with John. So he robs him, cuts him up with an axe, oh. and oh. burns down the house. Jesus, that escalated <laughs> very quickly. Okay. Yeah. So one more count of arson and we've got a pattern. Okay, great. Okay. I'm, I'm ready for this. So <laughs> so wait, when you say cut him up with the axe, you mean he killed him with the axe yeah. or he just cut him up some? Apparently he like <laughs> cut him up. He hacked him. Oh, hacked pieces. him to pieces. Yeah. Okay, cool. Shit. Right. Again, he's a cop. So the next morning, he's actually at the scene of the crime. Huh. Who could have done this? <laughs> <laughs> Beats the heck out of me, fellas. In fact, there's a <laughs> some kind of criminal mastermind. <laughs> so in this small town, on the newspaper, the front of the newspaper, he's on it as the investigator for the crime. Fantastic, yeah, awesome. So, of course, it goes unsolved. Yes. the The whole town's like, well, you know, sucks to be John. Well, in this town of three hundred, <laughs> I have no idea who could have possibly done this. <laughs> they obviously have a gambling. <laughs> Probably some drifter. From okay. Finland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is turning out to be the beginning of the end for him. Uh, again, based on what I said on the last episode, I do get frustrated that these serial killers, these arsonists, these uh, embezzlers, like mm-hmm. these people somehow have significant others. It's right. very frustrating to read. And he has a fiance, 
And they start having relationship troubles. I wonder why. Oh, no. The charm is worn off. <laughs> so this is like six months after the, like, he goes out gambling with friends. So, fiance, so it's almost assumed that they live together. Sure. So it's like, what what, what happened that night? I don't know. I don't, I, <laughs> what happened to John? <laughs> why were you all sweaty and covered in blood? <laughs> and you smelled like a campfire? What the fuck, man? <laughs> so, like, they get into a fight, and apparently he starts hitting her. He handcuffs her and puts her at gunpoint to convince her that they should stay together. Whoa. That, yeah. That tracks. That's a psychopath. Did it work? <laughs> <laughs> and she fell madly in love with him all over again. They renewed their vows and just had a great time. Okay, so to his fiance, her name is Ula Erstberg. Hot. Yes. Oh, man, is Ula. this where Stock, um, Stockholm Syndrome came from? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Luckily, Ula... You love me. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, Ula does not take the shit. She survives... I don't know how she survives. I'm surprised like he didn't kill her. I if I had She's to, obviously a boss. Yeah. She's like yeah. I'll just fucking her deal with Ula. it. Yeah. She's yeah, built like a Ula. bovine. You know, she's like a big she's got big shoulders <laughs> from carrying milk pails. She's a strong <laughs> Swedish gal. Yeah. Uh, but apparently she gets him in trouble with the police. He's not arrested. He's not convicted or charged or anything. They just fire him from the police squad. That sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least they fired him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hate to say that it, that, but I mean yeah. like yeah. I gotta say, they, yeah, right. Like at least they didn't put him on a desk job and give right, him a desk pension. Duty. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's so, fucked up, man. That's so sad. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, like he's he's jobless, and all he's doing for weeks on end um, is pestering her to take him back, and she kept saying no. Stay strong, Ula. Stay strong. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, yes, queen. So, the the account says that on the night of August twenty first, nineteen fifty two, less than a year after he murders his buddy John, he's at his parents' house late at night, which leads me to believe. It's never said if he has his own place. I'd like to think at this point, like, he lost his house. He's moved back in with folks. He lost his girl. Yeah. He lost yeah. his girl. Lost yeah. his job. <laughs> lost his job. He's, he's a scrub. He's back home. Yeah, he's back Full home in the house. Home. Full but apparently, scrub. like, it's like midnight, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to go on a bender. Fuck. A murder bender. So <laughs> oh. he starts oh. off. Different type of bender than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> he starts off by murdering both his parents. Hulda and Per Alfred Heaton, which I love the name Hulda. Hulda. That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 But he, he murders both of them. Weird side note, I do want to ask. So his father was 74 when he died and Hulda was 57. So what is that? 67. Robin the Cradle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little bit. 17 years? Mm-hmm. 18 years, something like that. I think it's a little wild. I don't really have much to say on age gaps, but I just want to throw that in. I like that this is where you pause to be like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And then let me guess, then he burned the house. Down. He, he axes them up. Did he burn the house? <laughs> Fuck yeah. All three right. for three, baby. We got our pattern. I love it. <laughs> and so he's not done yet. So he goes, he knows where Ula works. Ula apparently is like one of those people that like works at an elderly home who takes care of the elderly people. I, I think it's like a nurse, a type of nurse is what she is. Um, like a geriatric nurse. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he knows that she sleeps at the elderly home Mm -hmm. and he climbs up the fire escape. Like he drives to the elderly home, climbs up the fire escape. What a creeper. Yeah, right. And he goes to her room and he finds out that she's not there. Yes. Uh Uh-oh. Because she's a boss. So he takes her oats. So so it it just kind of cuts to like he finds her in the room of a coworker. Oh, yeah. scandaloso. But I think it's weird, like, to make it sound like he's just creeping around, like, where the fuck is she? I mean, it's a town of 300. No, if he just wanders around, here. eventually he's going to find her. But yeah, uh, she's in bed with her friend Agnes Lunden. And it's never said if. Oh, Agnes. Mm-hmm. It's never said if, like, they were there hooking up or out of safety or she was going to kill her or he was going to kill her. Yeah, I mean, she could have been kind of freaked out by the whole situation. Who knows? I mean, it sounds like she knew he was the killer. Yeah. And, like, she was like, my days are numbered. He's going to fucking off me. <laughs> I yeah. don't trust this guy. Yeah, I mean, if your mentally unstable cop husband points a gun at you and demands that you love him, you're probably going to fall into the arms of an Agnes. Yeah. Yes. Maybe I she got agree. that octopus. Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows? <laughs> 
So wet ass Agnes. You know, three for three. <laughs> let's shoot for four for four. He he axes them up. Oh my god! <laughs> Damn it! I was really rooting for her. I know. I really thought Ula could get out of this. So he axes Agnes. Ula blocks the exits to the retirement home. No. Lights the whole place on fire. God damn it. Fuck. Yeah. So he took out the entire retirement home. Apparently, most of them survived. I don't know how, but only five died. So wait, hold on a sec. So how he many went. people were in there? I don't know. He just Jeez. says five died. So he went to the retirement home, didn't find her. Yeah. Found her with Agnes, axed him up, mm -hmm. and then went back to the retirement home and burned it down. Well, it was he all never in left. the retirement home. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I she thought you said in, she wasn't there. No, like, she wasn't in she her She wasn't room. in her specific... Oh, yeah, 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 that yeah, makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, yeah. Man, he dropped the population size by like 25%. <laughs> yeah, of right? Town. Like full, full on, just like, we're going to change some things up here. So by this time <laughs> in the morning, the cops were like, yeah, we think it's this guy. And so they go on a, <laughs> they go on a we, huge... We think. <laughs> they go on a huge man. Call me crazy. <laughs> Hey, yeah, has anyone seen Tor ever since we fired him? Hey, has anyone seen the old axe we used to have <laughs> laying around and all the matches and kerosene? <laughs> so Tor, he skips town and I Google mapped, like they were like, yeah, he skipped town and went to this lake. And I Google mapped it, like how far this lake is from mm -hmm. Herva, 20 minutes. Like a 20 minute drive? It's just a 20 minute drive. Sweet. And that's a, like a modern drive. So it's probably a little bit more of a hoof back in the day. No, but he had a car. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it wasn't like a Mazda, you know, it was like, what, 1950? It's like a Model T or some shit. <laughs> well, well, I guess it might have been an early Volvo. It Maybe. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. Or an, uh, what is it, a Plymouth, an Oldsmobile or something? Yeah. Super, super old school. That's very American, but yeah, maybe. Anyway. I mean, maybe he imported it, Grant. Why you gotta be a killjoy? He could have, you're right. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Jesus, how do you deal with him? <laughs> a sob, okay? <laughs> it was a sob. <laughs> You happy now? Yes, so much happier. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the cops find the car like at this cabin on the lake. <laughs> they find that the cabin is entirely empty, and the only thing they can find is a, a suicide note left by uh, a tour. Yes, and I'm all tore up inside. <laughs> <laughs> Signed, tour. <laughs> so good. Okay, <laughs> missed the hell out of that one. Um, this is. A rough translation of what the suicide note from says. ancient Swedish translation. <laughs> the phone rings. The police are running and looking for me, but never find me. Never. But my car has found it now. And if you want to solve a riddle, look in the wet if you think I'm here. Uh, he killed himself by waiting himself down in the lake. So uh, the, nice. In the wet. Look in the mm -hmm. wet. Yeah. Uh, what a riddle. There's your rap lyrics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look in the wet if you want to find me, bitch. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's your last lyric. Yeah. That's the, the quadrant. Look in the wet. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Tor. <laughs> okay, so it gets going. It goes, yes, my friends, why have I done all this now? It may seem to be a deed's work, and it is a crash too. As you know yourself, you are known by other people. And there you can see today red and tomorrow dead. You never catch when one's hour hits. I'll just briefly talk about what I've done and why, so you do not lie to the curious public. In September 1943, I put fire at Gustav's Hills Brewery in Anilov, and the reason was that I had stolen oats in the wind. We had a horse at home, caressed and constantly hungry. I do know that something stolen, I lit them, and the sender has just followed the other, as you know. In the autumn of... This is this is my favorite. So I went and pieced this one together. This one's pretty wild. In the autumn of 1946, I stabbed a motorcycle, L50, in Christianstad and left it in Assam. In 1951, especially between 10.30 and 2.30 a.m., I murdered Johann Fulke Allen Nielsen in... God, these, these are some weird words. Tiernarp and lit his house at 3 o'clock. Not in Tiernarp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was his buddy John. The reason right. was... Money and this I. Motherfucker's came. name is John, and he lives in Tiernarp. <laughs> well, it's uh, Johan. Oh. Yeah. The reason was money, and I came over four thousand three hundred sixty dollars at the time. So he killed his buddy Johan for four grand. 
but he lost. Anyway, and the last thing happened because I was deceived by a woman who meant everything to me. She has let me down and I pay betrayal in this way. On August 21st at 24 o'clock, I killed my father and my mother. Then I drove to the fraudulent girl in Herva and got there at 1230. After seeing me around, I killed her and her boss at 1.30 a.m. and lighted at 2 o'clock. At first, I had poured out patrol a little somewhere. Yes, now I stop and hope you can complete it. My last will is that if there were anything left after me, two people, the names were given, um, well, like stricken from the record, uh, share. These are the best friends I've ever had, and they need it both, then, and they need it both, then well both. In the hope that only facts are coming to the end of the press, I now regret that I have never become detective because then many undeclared mysteries would have been resolved. <laughs> Without bragging, this is all I've thought of. <laughs> this fucking douchebag. Amazing. Yes. Wow. Now, 4 o'clock on August 22nd. Still going. 1952. <laughs> it's a hell of a suicide. <laughs> they write it on like a fucking legal pad. like. <laughs> and I end my sad life with the hope of being understood and forgiven by those who have the desire and ease. Glad, calm, and ready, I go to death for everything now has now been met. Tor Heaton, killer, address unknown. P.S. My parents... There's a P.S. <laughs> P.S. My parents killed me because they would not let me suffer for what I did. That's a weird, I think, mistranslation. Yeah, it sounds like it. But like I th he's saying that I killed yeah. my parents because I didn't want them to suffer knowing what I did. If I had just finished reading the suicide note, <laughs> I would go to the lake that he drowned himself in and piss in it <laughs> and then drive away. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the fuck? Who? Man, I have no words. Hold yeah, on. I know. There's a lot to unpack with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about this dude reminds you of Forrest Gump? <laughs> because I think he's so stupid and things just, <laughs> he somehow just gets away with it. Uh, oh, also he had a, a I'm nickname. I'm just trying to piece that. <sighs> Man. What was his nickname? I'm trying to remember. Swedish Chef. Yes. <laughs> His whole note, suicide note, just. Durr, 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 durr. Oh burka, 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 durka. I mean, but I, I just hold on. So, <laughs> okay, uh, is everybody ready for like my theory on on everything with this? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. I need more to like. I need some help here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think at a young age he had a drinking problem. If I. Like my my belief is probably his parents were like, here's some money, go into town and go buy some oats. I think he goes to a brewery and he's like, now I like beer. And he just gets tanked, spends all the money, falls asleep in a bush. And then he's like, fuck, I spent all the money. I can't go back home without any oats. <laughs> I'll just go back to the brewery, steal their oats. And he's like, fuck, I'm going to get in trouble. And he's still drunk. So he's like, I'll just... Burn it down. Burn it down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it worked. I'm trying to envision this in like Forrest Gump's language. <laughs> trying to like hear Forrest Gump say this and imagine him being totally evil. I, I don't see the Forrest Gump metaphor. Life is like a box of chocolate. I was, I was going if that way. If you don't yeah. like it, you can just burn it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I really like Bear. So you think he was like a drunk 12-year-old and like, who burned down the brewery to cover the fact that he spent all his money on beer yeah. that he presumably bought from right. someone who was selling it to a 12-year-old. I mean, like... Mama says, stupid is, as stupid does, so I burned it down. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, especially in this region, drinking at the age of 13 was very common. Yeah. Under I mean... In Europe and Scandinavia, yeah. it's very, very common for parents to wow, give this guy is alcohol awesome. to <sighs> minors. And so people. if you think about it in the terms of like, he got drunk and was like, you know what? I'm just going to fix my problem and burn it down. And if you take that same concept, he goes to a poker game. Mm -hmm. So when you have a poker game, it's assumed it's not just w him and one other person. Right. So you have to think there's several people at this poker game and he's probably just get like just losing money galore. People leave and they're like, dude, he's being a dickhead. And he's just like, no, I'm not being a dickhead. Give me all my money. 
And I think he gets drunk at the poker game. True. Everyone's like, he's being a drunk asshole again. They leave, and he's arguing with his buddy, Johan, and he's like, you know what? I'm Fuck drunk. you, Johan. I can, I can fix this problem again. I, <laughs> I know I know the tricks of the trick. Axe and murder. Axe and fire. A yeah, axe and fire. And it <laughs> works again. I just said- But Ula, Ula was the, the woman that- mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't convince. Did Ula talk about a bunch of empty bottles around the place? Or <laughs> like, where are you getting the drunk thing from? Because they were playing poker and every, like, a lot of these things happen late at night. Mm -hmm. And you cannot imagine a world where people are doing things late at night without drinking. Without, like, <laughs> not in Sweden in 1956. For, like, <laughs> and 52. doing nothing? Mm -hmm. I mean, <sighs> it is cold. Like, it is cold. I'm not saying they weren't drinking, I'm but I, it just, it, that's just his theory. I mean, that's it's fine to Are have you that you theory. You go to a poker game just stone cold sober. I'm just saying I don't see the drunken Force Gump aspect of this <laughs> like you do. I feel like this is an idea you had and you latched onto, and you're like, this makes all the sense this, in the it's world. All, it's all coming together. It, it's, it's you're just like looking at the cork board with all the like string and the like I photographs. Get like the simple aspect yeah. of how Forrest Gump is perceived, kind of in the beginning of like. You know, stupid is as stupid does, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or uh, mama said all this, whatever. And you kind of get this idea of like maybe he's not the brightest, and maybe he just kind of has to fit the solution into a very small, like understandable, yeah, box for himself. <laughs> Is a box which is of murder. axes, <laughs> which is murder and fire, and you know, I mean, in that regard, it is an easy solution to a very difficult problem. To most problems, yeah. <laughs> I'm picturing him at the grocer, and they're like, you know, like you know, it's like, hey, you're counting out the, you know, like weighing the meat and everything. He's like, you're giving me some bad meat. It's gray, and it's like, no, it's good meat. It's good. And he just like is slowly raising <laughs> up an axe, and Ula's just like, no, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Put it down. <laughs> Everything's fine. So, again. <laughs> the the last murder when he's at his parents' house and like that the whole slew, it's also late night. He was obviously triggered after midnight. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he's a werewolf. No, I'm thinking like he just like got drunk. He's like, you know what? I can yeah. fix this problem too. It's like a like a gremlin, you know. Don't feed him after midnight. Don't yeah. don't get them wet after yeah. midnight. Don't yeah. don't get him wet after midnight. Yeah. Don't get him wet after midnight. Yeah, on that sweet sweet. Nectar of the gods. That's sweet that Swedish beer. Booze. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you have do you have a better theory? I, because it seems like you're hating on my theory, and I think my theory has got legs. I think he seemed like a like a happy go lucky dumb asshole that killed a lot of people with an axe and burned a lot of buildings down. <laughs> <laughs> and a shit poet. <laughs> yeah, and then he tries to go all Allen Ginsberg at the fucking end. <laughs> he just writes an essay Find on why he's a fucking wet. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also love how, like, in the, the way he goes out is just like, and you should have made me detective because I would have fixed shit. <laughs> right? It's all your fault that I murdered these people. And if I had been detective, everything you know, would have been fine. If you'd made me detective, I could have solved all the murders that I committed. <laughs> Jerks. Maybe he had, like, multiple personality disorder. You know who? We didn't know that yet. And he just didn't remember that mm. after a certain period of time in the evening, he killed a lot of people, and all he wanted to do was just solve the murders that he didn't do. Oh, <laughs> like a dark half type yeah. thing. I think <laughs> like, this is, damn. Grace, to kind of play off your theory, <laughs> I think this is Stephen King's The Dark Half, but mm -hmm. starring Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting from this thing. <laughs> like Steve Martin in The Jerk. <laughs> can, can it be? I'd still, yeah, I'm I like still that. holding strong like about this alcohol thing. I'd no. like to... Like, it's all Steve Martin in the dark half. <laughs> I love how Grace is going like, no, this is like a mental disorder. Like he probably has multiple personalities. I'm trying and to legit. And I'm like, nah, he gets blackout drunk. I was like, oh shit. I, oh, well, problem solved, I guess. We'll just yeah. keep on going. Yeah. I'm on Grace's side. <laughs> yeah. I like both. <laughs> you know, Sweden, really torn. Is, Sweden is one of those countries that gets limited sunlight for certain periods of time. Yeah, but, right. Mm -hmm. No, I thought it was the opposite. I thought they get like unlimited sunlight. Well, no, One I mean, yes. Year. So depending on, I think, where they fall in this region, they get 
like 18 hours of sunlight Ugh. for the summer and then 18 hours of darkness for the winter time. I don't like either of those. Yeah, it's too much like... of too much of one thing for yeah. too long. I mean, it's yeah. legitimately suggested that uh, bipolar but, disorder comes from that region of the right. world. Right. So that's really? why yeah. I'm like what? maybe oh. he did have yeah, it's crazy. psychological issues because he was stuck in sad darkness for too long. Maybe. And it yeah. manifested as a child. And he light a, lit a fire so he could finally he see He needed some... to see some light. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. This is, this is odd enough. From the darkness comes the light, Grant. <laughs> the cleansing fire of my sins. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm all about this theory yeah. now. Like, <laughs> like hole in one, man. Like, oh, you got idiot. it. I mean, I'm speculating. But. Oh, and Jamie's not? <laughs> I <laughs> genius speculation on my behalf. They did like, DNA testing on these old bottles of moonshine in Sweden. And like, <laughs> yes. Man, Anything's awesome. possible. We'll just say that. Yeah. Anything is possible. Cool. Uh, that's that's my quickie. I like it. Yeah. We'll call so, it there then. Short, sweet, Tor and Swedish. Heaton? Tor Heaton. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Tor Heaton. To my homie. In the wet. <laughs> fucking chilling in the wet. Chilling in the wet. <laughs> I feel Did like... you catch the name of the lake? No, I don't. I don't have it. No worries. Me. I was just curious. It's probably like Svarlsbard or some we shit like that. We should just all go piss in that lake. <laughs> yeah. Like, You're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we could do a murder schmurder on the road. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everyone goes to Sweden. Murder schmurder goes to Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I bet you there are some wild ass fucking murders that are like local lore. To Scandinavia. Oh, yeah. You could absolutely do an entire, mm -hmm. like... Mm -hmm. They probably have, like, some kind of ice troll boogeyman type myth about, like, some... Absolutely. Some dude who murdered his family in a cabin, like, in the darkness. Yes. And then just, like, like a like a Swedish Wendigo, and then he just became a monster. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of uh, trolls, there's this really great independent film made from, like, Sweden or uh, Finland or whatever. I think it's called Troll. Yeah, it's you awesome. and I watched Troll it. Hunter or something. Yeah, maybe it is. Troll Hunter. Is it the the found footage one mm -hmm. or yeah. the the one that's like hand it's meant to that be one found footage? It's that's phenomenal. a great one. Yes. That one's way better than you think it's going to be. Yeah, like I, I started up and was like, we'll Grant and I see. did the same, and it was like, this is going to be so bad. And then we were like, actually, holy, it's pretty shit. solid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So shout out to Troll Hunter. There you go, the murder schmurder bump. <laughs> <laughs> cool. No, well, until next time. Until next time. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't do what he did. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you can't drink. Most importantly, don't leave a bird your fucking away. <laughs> just overly long, almost unreadable suicide. Man. Yeah. All of right. all the things he did, I disagree with that the most. <laughs> I do too. Like, that's my biggest fault with him so far. And that's how bad that note was. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible note. Zero out of 10. Thanks for joining us, Grace. Thank of course. Grace. Thanks Thank for you. having me. All right, bye. 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 And the book of mysteries closes on all of our heroes. Until next time, my fellow wanderer, my kindred spirit in the graveyard, we had some laughs, some scares, whoa, and maybe even learned something along the way. Think of us for your next podcast listening pleasure. Think of us when you go to sleep and the house settles and you close your eyes and feel something in your little gumdrop buttons if you like what you hear subscribe follow us on instagram at trashville underscore usa and if there's a true crime story you want us to cover email us at don't email trashville at gmail.com goodbye